So, I recently published a video where I hunted down an obscure bug in Pokemon Stadium. When you used the transfer pack to move Pokemon between Pokemon Red and Pokemon Stadium, Pokemon with spaces in their nicknames would no longer display correctly in Pokemon Red. The most notable instance of this was in a playthrough of Pokemon Red by Oni Plays, where their Pokemon Lil Stank got corrupted into Lil. Turns out this could have been prevented by a single change to a bite in the source code. And in fact, the first and second revisions of Pokemon Stadium make this change. However, since that video came out, I've got a lot of comments asking more questions about the bug, and I wanted to take some time to answer those questions, share extra details, and share some ways that you can recover your Pokemon names. By far, one of the most common questions I got in the comments of the last video was if loading your corrupted Pokemon in a later version of Pokemon Stadium would fix their names. I actually made a mistake last video when I said the bug was only present in version 1.0 of Pokemon Stadium. I must have gotten my ROM files mixed up when testing, because when I checked again while working on this video, it turns out that version 1.1 also has the bug. Regardless, let's see what happens. Using a previously corrupted save file, we loaded up in Pokemon Stadium 1.2, and upon saving back to Pokemon Red, we can fully see it restores the names of the Pokemon. So why does this happen? When your Pokemon are loaded from Pokemon Red, each character gets converted into Pokemon Stadium's character encoding, and then, when getting saved back, the characters are converted into Pokemon Red's character encoding. Ideally, characters should be able to make this round trip without being changed, but that's not the case in all versions of Pokemon Stadium. When saving back to Pokemon Red in the bugged versions of Stadium, spaces get incorrectly mapped to null, which results in Pokemon Red's string printing routine abruptly stopping in the middle of the name. We'll talk about why this happens more later, but for those who might already have a hypothesis, I'll just say now that it's not because Pokemon Red uses null terminated strings. When these corrupted names get loaded in any versions of Pokemon Stadium, the null character gets converted back to a space character, which means that in Pokemon Stadium the names look uncorrupted, but in the first two versions of Pokemon Stadium, that space just gets mapped back to a null character, keeping them corrupted. In version 1.2 though, the space character gets correctly mapped back to a space, which lets Pokemon Red fully print the Pokemon nicknames. Now you might wonder what happens when doing the same thing in Pokemon Stadium 2, which we haven't talked about much. I assumed that it would also fix Pokemon names since it's the newer version, but it turns out that Pokemon Stadium 2 tries to be really consistent when loading or saving Pokemon names, because while it doesn't corrupt Pokemon with spaces in their names, it doesn't change the null in any corrupted Pokemon. That means you specifically have to use Pokemon Stadium 1.2 to fix Pokemon names. However, there is one Pokemon that gets irreparably corrupted by the buggy versions of Pokemon Stadium. Mr. Mime's name is weird. Some commenters wondered if he had a space in his name that would get corrupted by Pokemon Stadium, but here's the thing. There's no space in Mr. Mime's name. If we look at the tiles that make up his name, we see that this character is just a period. But this isn't the same character that you would enter when using the Pokemon naming screen. The period on the naming screen is actually just a decimal point. It's the exact same as the period character used in Mr. Mime's name, but shifted a pixel to the right. What's interesting about this is that the wiki I've been using as reference for the Pokemon Red character encoding says that these two should be rendering identically, but checking VRAM while running Pokemon Red in an emulator definitely shows the two are different, and going to the decomp of Pokemon Red to look at the towel data for the English font also confirms this. The difference is extremely small though, so I can understand why the wiki says this. Regardless of the graphical differences, Pokemon Stadium also treats the two completely differently, as they are represented by different bytes in the character encoding. The decimal character causes no issues when loaded in Pokemon Stadium, but because the period isn't something you can enter on the naming screen, the developers never anticipated needing to translate it to a period character when loading. Except for Mr. Mime, the only time this character would be used is in dialogue boxes. In all three versions of Pokemon Stadium, this period gets mapped to a space, and because we already know how the first two versions of Pokemon Stadium handle spaces, his name just gets truncated down to Mr. And even in 1.2, it still results in his name just becoming Mr. Mime, but without the period. Pokemon Stadium 2 correctly handles Mr. Mime, but like before, it can't fix a corrupted Mr. Mime. We can use the name raider to rename him, but if we rename him back to Mr. Mime, it won't be the same as it was before. This will be Mr. Mime with a decimal point instead of a period. So is there any way to bring back Mr. Mime to his original state? There is, but we're gonna have to turn to drastic measures. This is a game shark. And this is a game shark. And this is the cat I'm currently cat sitting. One commenter tipped me off to the idea of using the Game Shark as a way to implement fixes to Pokemon Stadium, but on an actual physical cartridge instead of an emulator like before. I've never used a Game Shark, but I knew it would let you modify game memory on a real system. 
So you can do fun things like being able to run backwards in Mario 64 or give him unlimited lives. While the GameShark comes with a bunch of codes for popular games, you can actually enter new codes that you find on the internet. Or more interestingly, you can come up with codes of your own. We want to modify Pokemon Stadium in such a way that we can restore Mr. Mime's name, and I think it'd also be cool to implement the fix for names with spaces in them as well. So let's start first with Pokemon names containing spaces, as I believe it's going to be a lot simpler and it'll help us understand how to write GameShark codes in the first place. So what do we need the code to do? Well, the translation table used to map characters from Pokemon Stadium to Pokemon Red is just a big chunk of memory that we should be able to change using the GameShark. By changing values of specific bytes in this chunk of memory, we change how characters get written back to the save in Pokemon Red. To change how spaces get mapped back, we need to change the entry that's used for spaces, which is currently set to null. If we just change this value back to the hex value 7f, Pokemon with spaces in their name will correctly be written back instead of having a null in their name. And as mentioned before, since nulls get read as spaces, this fix can be used to actually fix Pokemon names that have been corrupted. So that seems like it'll work, but first we need to come up with a code. The codes are 12-digit hexadecimal numbers broken into three parts. The prefix, the offset, and the quantity. For example, this is the code to make Mario have unlimited lives. The prefix 80 means that the code will write this 8-bit value to the location specified by the offset digits. These hex digits are just the same as the decimal value 100, so this code basically just writes the value 100 to the location in RAM where Mario's lives are stored. This means you can never die, as this value is constantly written to that location. Now this is similar to what we want to do, but we need to change two things. We need to change the value we're writing to be OX7F, and then we need to figure out what address we need to write to, which is going to be the hard part. We already know the address in the ROM that this byte would be at, since we explored that last time, but the ROM address is not going to be the same as the RAM address. To make things simple though, we can just dump the contents of RAM while running Pokemon Stadium in an emulator, and with a bit of searching around, we can find the location of the byte we're actually trying to modify. That's the theoretical part done, now let's actually try it on the real thing. To make sure this code actually works, I made sure to check that the names on the Pokemon card I'm using are still corrupted. These are the Pokemon names that we're trying to fix in the last video, and this is what they theoretically should look like if our cheat works. If we add in our new code and boot into Pokemon Stadium, nothing seems particularly different. However, if we go into the Pokemon Lab, move some Pokemon around, and save, we can go back to GB Tower and confirm that our Pokemon names are back. I was incredibly relieved when I saw this, since I had already bought three transfer packs, two Game Sharks, and four Nintendo 64 controllers, since so much hardware either straight up broke or was bugging out on me. But now that we've confirmed we can modify the translation tables, let's try and fix Mr. Mime's name. There are three different states Mr. Mime can be in before getting loaded into Pokemon Stadium, which will require different Game Shark codes to fix. The first condition is when his name is uncorrupted. We'll need to create a cheat code that will let us load the period in Mr. Mime's name as a decimal point and then save it back as a period again, so that Pokemon Stadium can actually display it. The other two conditions are where Mr. Mime's name is already corrupted, either with the period getting turned into a null in versions 1.0 or 1.1, or just being turned into a space by version 1.2. These are slightly simpler to fix, but anything we implement may have unintended side effects, which we'll talk about later. Using the same technique as before, we can modify the loading translation table so that the troublesome period in Mr. Mime's name is loaded as a decimal point. And then we can also modify the saving translation table so that the decimal point gets saved back as a period character. This should keep Mr. Mime's name intact. If we want to just fix his name after it gets corrupted, it's actually pretty simple to handle both cases. In the first case, where Mr. Mime's name had the period transformed into a space, we can fix it by updating the translation tables to save spaces back as periods. Make sure you don't include any Pokemon with spaces that are in their names when using this fix, as they'll also all of a sudden have a period in their name as well. This code will actually also work for the case where the period got changed into a null, since when the null is read into Pokemon Stadium, it gets read as a space, and therefore will get saved back as a period due to us using this same code. Let's quickly verify that these cheats all work. First, we'll need to actually get a Mr. Mime onto my physical copy of Pokemon Blue, but we can't use the normal method that involves an in-game trade with an NPC. This Mr. Mime is already nicknamed Marcel, which kind of defeats the point. However, I've devised a method to get an unnicknamed Mr. Mime onto my Pokemon Blue cart. All we'll need is one copy of Pokemon Blue, a Game Boy Flash cart, two Game Boy handhelds that can trade, one link cable, software that can create and modify Pokemon save files, such as PK Hex, and a ROM file for Pokemon Red. We can load a ROM of Pokemon Red and a pre-made save file that has Mr. Mime on it to the flash cart. And then using the two Game Boys and a Link cable, we can swap the Mr. Mime onto the physical cartridge, which we normally wouldn't be able to get. The reason we can't use the flash cart directly with the transfer pack is that upon boot up, the flash cart has a menu, and this won't play well with Pokemon Stadium, which is gonna check its checksum and make sure that it is actually a Pokemon game. Regardless, now that we have a physical cart with Mr. Mime on it, we can go ahead and test our GameShark fixes. 
Now that we have some nice and fresh test subjects, I think a good place to start is with the code that should be able to keep an uncorrupted Mr. Mime from becoming corrupted. This Game Shark cheat is actually made of two codes, but we can group them both together under one name. One code changes the loading table, and the other one changes the saving table, theoretically letting a period character get loaded back and forth. We're also going to keep the cheat that fixes spaces, since we have some other Pokemon in our party that we don't want to get corrupted. First thing we do is go to the Pokemon Lab to see if the period has been loaded as a decimal, and we can see that it has. Normally these would be spaces, but it looks like half the code is at least confirmed to work. Without saving, we should next check in the GB Tower to make sure the save file is in an uncorrupted state, just in case. Once we do go back to the Pokemon Lab and try the second half of this Game Shark cheat by saving, this is what we should see. So we go back to the Pokemon Lab and do just that. After coming back to the GB Tower and crossing my fingers, we can see that the cheat has successfully worked. I'm honestly amazed we've gotten this far just off assumptions on how Pokemon Stadium works, but I'm not going to complain either. Next up is fixing corrupted names by saving spaces back as periods. Since we're just changing how spaces get saved, the cheat is only one Game Shark code, which updates the save table. This time, without the code to load periods as decimals, we can see that Mr. Mime's name has had the period changed into a space in Pokemon Stadium. This is the normal behavior for Pokemon Stadium, as we discussed before. But let's see now what happens if we trigger a save and go back to the GB Tower. The first thing I noticed is that I was right about making sure to not include any of the Pokemon with spaces in their names when doing this, since it looks like a few of our Pokemon now have names with periods in them. The second thing I noticed is that the cheat also worked to fix Mr. Mime's name. But the last thing we need to check is if this code can also fix up the names that got truncated by the period getting turned into a null. By disabling any cheat codes we have enabled in the Game Shark, we can get all of our Pokemon back into the state that sent me down to this rabbit hole in the first place. But once we turn the spaces to periods cheat code back on and go through the process we've been through probably about 15 times by now, we can see again that the code works exactly the way we predicted. That seems to be as far as the Game Shark can take us, but before I finish the video up, let's do a speed round wrapping up some final loose threads. Loose thread number one. Why does Pokemon Red stop printing when it encounters a null in a name? Some people surmise it's because Pokemon uses null terminated strings, but in reality it's just because the printing routine used to have an error handler from when a null was encountered, but then before release they simply change it to quit the printing routine. Pokemon strings are actually terminated by the byte 50. Next, a popular question that didn't really fit into the themes of this video. What happens if you start a Pokemon name with a space? It's much more boring than you'd expect. I'm no Pokemon expert, so I don't know if there's any part of the game that would specifically require at least one character to be in your name, but because the printing routine simply just exits when encountering a null, nothing special really happens. It just kind of looks funky. Now a personal question. Does this bug affect trainer names? Your trainer name is also loaded in a couple areas of Pokemon Stadium, so would having a space in your name cause it to get truncated? Turns out it's only Pokemon names that are weird, because trainer name was completely unaffected when I tried this. Now a more technical question. I've mainly used two emulators for researching this project, MGBA and Project 64. However, several commenters suggested that other emulators for at least Nintendo 64 may have better support for things like the transfer pack and the Game Boy Tower, which I could never get to run. Regardless, every emulator I tried either crashed, black screened, or otherwise aired out when trying to use the GB Tower, and some didn't even work when just trying to use the Pokemon Lab something that the Project 64 emulator never had an issue with. I can say, however, that using Moopin64 Plus Next is probably the best bet for anybody doing N64 transfer pack emulation, even if it's just because it doesn't randomly have a 30 second boot up screen that locks you out of using the software. This last one is just a random hypothesis, but I'll leave it as an open exercise to anybody willing to test it out. From reading through the source code of Pokemon Red to learn more about how nicknames work, it looks like Pokemon Red checks if a Pokemon is nicknamed by testing the first byte in its name. Otherwise, it's just the species name that gets printed. Technically, could we write a Game Shark code to update the save table so that all characters, or at least the characters at the start of a Pokemon name, get saved back as the Terminator and then effectively become unnicknamed? Not sure if there's any intriguing uses, but just something that was on my mind while I'm sitting here at the end of recording. If you have any burning questions that weren't answered by this video, please feel free to leave them below. I'm not always able to include everything in these videos because it might get super tedious or boring to explain certain small details, but it's probable that I'll be able to answer most questions that you guys leave, or at least point you in the right direction for answers. For the moment though, I think I'm going to take a break from analyzing the code of Pokemon Stadium. That's not to say I won't be making more videos anytime soon. I've got a document that's constantly filling up with project ideas I'm hoping to turn into videos. So far, making videos has been a great excuse to learn new things, and I really, really want to do some projects involving FPGAs, PCB design, and modding retro hardware, since those are my current interests. If any of that sounds interesting to you, make sure to subscribe, and you should hopefully be seeing the next video from me within a month of the release date of this video. This video took a bit longer than I'd like, but I'm learning as I go, and getting more comfortable with things like editing, recording, script writing, and organizing research. Speaking of recording, I want to shout out my friend Houston, who was generous enough to supply me with a camera, batteries, and plenty of advice regarding using a DSLR, all free of charge. And final thanks goes out to Vetro Gaming, who wasn't 
affiliated with this product at all. I've had zero contact with them, but I found the Game Boy Color backlight kit super easy to use, which was great because I really, really wanted to make sure that I had a backlit Game Boy Color for this video. Either way, thanks for watching.